Well, like it or not, students in some states have in fact gone back to school and in some counties, particularly in red states, uh, they've resumed in-person learning in spite of the risks that that obviously poses. They're just going to pretend as if we're not in the middle of a pandemic. Obviously, that's going to cause cases to spike and it doesn't just affect people with small children who are going to school. It affects everyone because if you live in one of those counties then someone with COVID-19 may go to school and get it from school that person may go to the store and you know uh infect their cashier that cashier in turn may infect customers do you understand like do you see the problem I think that's obvious most people see it but our public officials Donald Trump Education Secretary Betsy DeVos all insist that we have to do this we have to pretend as if the pandemic isn't actually a thing now, this photograph that went viral on Reddit should horrify everyone. This was taken in Georgia, and apparently this school is within a town that is currently a hotspot for coronavirus. And I can't really see all of their faces, but I count three students wearing masks. Yeah, this is going to get so much worse because... Donald Trump is, uh, he's not budging on this. In fact, just on Tuesday again, he tweeted out in all caps, open the schools, and he put three exclamation points there, which really tells you that he means business. Now, what's frustrating with politicians is that oftentimes they do things very clearly because they're not going to have to deal with the consequences of their own actions. So, for example, we see politicians vote to send your children to die in wars that they'd never allow their own children to serve in. And the same is true in this particular instance. Donald Trump is saying, let's reopen the schools. But do you think he's going to send Barron Trump to a school with in-person learning? Of course not. In fact, after Trump made that tweet... Barron's private school announced that they will not be reopening. In fact, no in-person learning will be taking place in fall term. And as a result, the president's son will be safely starting ninth grade with online-only classes while his dad tells everyone else that they have to go back to school and resume in-person learning in spite of the risk that that poses to their health. In other words, safety for me, but not thee. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. Your life is meaningless to him. The peasants get to die and get crumbs to eat while the elites like him are safe. His son is going to be perfectly fine. Doesn't have to worry about catching COVID-19. If you still support Donald Trump, what is wrong with you? He doesn't care about you. His one major legislative accomplishment was to cut his own taxes. And now, as almost 160,000 Americans die because of a highly contagious disease, his response is, it is what it is. He just said that in an interview with Jonathan Swan on Axios. Yeah, people are going to die. It is what it is. He doesn't care about you. If you still support him after he has been explicitly revealing who he is, then you're just a fucking moron. I don't know what else to say. If you're voting for Donald Trump in 2020, you are stupid. Because he does not care about you. He only cares about himself and his own political power. Now, thankfully, there are people who are speaking up. And there's a lot of st uh, students and teachers and uh, families around the country and communities who are taking the fear that they're feeling and they're converting that into direct action. And they're trying to say, look, if we're going to be sent back to school, then we need equipment, we need more funding, and we have to make sure that we are able to conduct in-person classes in a way that's safe. So as Rachel M. Cohen of The Intercept reports, on Monday, in more than 25 states, thousands of parents, educators, students, and community members are participating in the National Day of Resistance, staging in-person and virtual actions to call for safe, well-funded, and racially just school reopening plans. The actions come in response to pressure from state governments and the White House to resume in-person learning so that kids can get back to the classroom and their parents back to work, but are also being tied to the ongoing pushback against school privatization 
funding from the Trump administration. In New York City, parents, students, and teachers will be marching from their union headquarters down to the Department of Education. In Los Angeles, activists are organizing a car caravan first outside the LA Chamber of Commerce and then around the Los Angeles Unified School District building. We're kicking it off at the LA Chamber because even during COVID, this is a time when a lot of corporations and Wall Street are making record-breaking profits, explained Sylvana Uri, a spokesperson for Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy, a progressive group participating in the protest. In Philadelphia and Baltimore, teacher unions are calling on Comcast to improve the quality of its service and make it more affordable for families. In Phoenix, activists are planning to demonstrate outside their state capitol building where educators can write letters to their elected officials about how they feel going back to school or, if they want, write their imagined obituaries. Monday is Arizona's first day back to school, so that's why we know we have to lead in organizing because people across the country will be watching us and learning what happens with reopening, said Rebecca Gorelli, a parent and a science educator participating in the Phoenix protest. In Chicago, activists are rallying outside of City Hall and Illinois' state government building. Among them will be G2 Brown, the national director for the Journey for Justice Alliance, a network of 30 grassroots organizations that help conceive of the Day of Resistance. When we look at the fact that these same communities have shuttered public schools and opened up new jails, do we really think they will prioritize the health and safety of black and brown children when it comes to reopening? Brown asked. We say no, or only if we make them do so. So I find this really encouraging and really inspiring. Um, their right to demand these things. Like teachers, it's bad enough that they can barely survive on the salaries that they receive, but now you're asking them to risk their lives. Like you're asking parents to trust that their students are going to be safe resuming in-person learning during a pandemic, exposing the people that they live with. I mean, I just, I don't know what to say about this situation um, other than it feels like we're living in a nightmare and we're just not taking this seriously. Again, I want to emphasize that even if you don't have anyone you know with small children or don't have small children yourself, this is going to make all of us worse off. Because if people resume business as normal, as we're seeing with that viral photo from Reddit, I mean, we're all going to be worse off. Cases are going to spike. It's going to continue to spread. And we're just not going to get it under control. Deaths will continue to climb. It's just... It's really, it's terrifying to think about how bad this is going to get. Like, how worse off we'll be by the end of the year. So, um, it just seems like we're going to pretend like the pandemic isn't a thing. You know, that's not to say that every single school district is going to treat this the same. Because really, the way that schools reopen, it's going to be up to local governments. Because school funding, it's derived disproportionately from property taxes. So Trump can say all he wants, reopen schools, reopen schools, but he can only withhold about 10% of funding. So that 10%, it is crucial still. You know, it's going to be up to local governments. They're going to be the ones ultimately who decide. And you can see that, you know, a lot of them are going to take it seriously, but others are not so much. And so that school in Georgia, where they're just reopening and they clearly don't have a plan to social distance, I just, I don't know what to say. It's just, it's heartbreaking because you know this is going to kill people. People are going to die because of this. And the worst part is they're going to be, there's going to be no accountability. Yeah, so this is America in 2020. Resuming business as usual. Schools resuming in-person learning as cases increase every single day. As uh, we are seeing more and more deaths due to this highly contagious virus that is deadly. Yeah. It's sickening. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad. Very sad. I'm unsubscribing.